Named after Longacre Square, the transportation hub of New York City at the turn of the 20th century, the elegant Longacre Theater was built by colorful producer Harry Frazee in 1913. Harry started out as an usher in a theater in the Midwest. He began to dominate the touring musicals in the Midwest, and then he decides to come to New York. To design the Longacre, Frazee hired one of the leading theater architects of the early 20th century, Henry Hertz. This is Henry Hertz's last theater. Hertz had studied architecture in Paris, and the street facade looks like a magnificent 18th century Parisian townhouse. The interior has very fine plaster ornament. It has strap work details and columns and is very, very carefully ornamented, but it's not lushly ostentatious like other theaters of the day were. Harry Frazee quickly lost control of the Long Acre, but continued to produce new musicals. A few years after he sold the theater, he bought the Boston Red Sox. Because he needed money to keep on producing musicals, he started selling the star players from the Boston Red Sox to the New York Yankees. And that would include Babe Ruth. In 1919, the Schubert brothers took over the theater. Over the years, a few notable hits and important stars kept the Long Acre going. In 1978, a musical about jazz legend Fats Waller made Broadway history. You see, I slam, I slam around your we knew that we were involved in something special. We opened Ain't Misbehavin' in the cabaret of the Manhattan Theater Club on February 8th, 1978. And on May 9th, 1978, we opened on Broadway. That's three very brief months. Ain't Misbehavin' was a unique collaboration between a group of young professionals trained at the Yale Drama School and a company of outstanding African-American performers. The combination of the two cultures came together to create what will forever be known as a black musical. This is now in the 21st century that we are still concerned about diversity on Broadway. So there's some seasons where you think, wow, isn't there any color on Broadway at all? And then there are other seasons that you think, we are definitely doing the right thing. Throughout the 1980s and 90s, the Long Acre continued to raise the bar on Broadway with serious drama. In 2007, it presented Eric Bogosian's controversial Talk Radio. The journey for Talk Radio from Off-Broadway to Broadway was one that went over about 20 years. When I was writing Talk Radio, I wanted to jump into a lot of really hot, hot topics, and I wanted to have a very hot, hot character in the center of all of it. In 2007, the Long Acre Theater turned out to be the perfect setting for Liev Schreiber's brilliant performance as an unraveling talk show host. I'm here to lead you by the hand through the dark forest of your own hatred and anger and humiliation. I'm providing a public service. The play faces out to the audience for the whole show. He's directing his energy at the audience the whole time. I was here three or four nights a week. I had my own spot in the second balcony. It's exciting to be in a place where one person can be on a stage and you feel like they're talking right to you no matter where you're sitting in the house. The Long Acre Theater remains an incubator for new voices and new ideas. People need a new way of talking about their lives. And I think we'll keep seeing that. Once a year, there's gonna be a play that's gonna be that very, very sharp play. And we may disagree about which one that is, but it, it, it will come for sure. The people who perform in these theaters are emotional and spiritual historians. No other medium brings together the narratives of all peoples across the planet. <laughs>